Hello everyone, I would like to welcome you to today's class. Uh, what we discussed last time uh, we would recap uh, in a brief way today. Uh, we started uh, with uh, zinc borohydride based reductions last time and we saw how the chelation uh, with zinc allows highly uh, diastereoselective reductions of ketones. Uh, and uh, we uh, tried to look at some examples in which the chelation uh, is uh, seen both as a 6 member and a 5 member transition state. Then uh, we uh, looked at the superhydrides uh, and uh, we saw how the like lithium dry ethyl bromoborohydride is uh, introduced um, in and compared with lithium borohydride which is uh, uh, more um, sort of uh, ionic than lithium triethyl borohydride. Since the electron releasing nature of uh, ethyl group uh, makes this as a stronger reducing agent this is called as a superhydride because it is uh, much stronger than lithium borohydride. And uh, then uh, we also saw how the, uh, it can be compared with uh, lithium uh, aluminum hydride where uh, we, we saw the reactivity was quite different from the lithium triethyl borohydride. And uh, then we uh, also looked at uh, towards the end the selectrides and in the case of selectrides we saw uh, three different types of L selectride, uh, K selectride and N selectride. Of course these two are not uh, really uh, so much popular as the L selectride is because of the lithium plus uh, being the uh, stronger uh, chelating ion than potassium and sodium. And therefore, L selectride is a reducing agent of a choice in which we have the secondary butyl group uh, as, a, as a bulky uh, substituent on the lithium uh, borohydride uh, based uh, reducing agent. And therefore, L selectride was uh, obviously uh, a choice for the reductions in which high diastereoselectivity is expected. And we saw some examples. We also discussed and uh, looked at that these are used only in cases where high diastereoselectivity is required at low temperature. And uh, uh, we uh, then looked at the uh, temperatures uh, where the uh, some cases seven, minus 78 degrees can also be used because of the high uh, reactivity of such molecules. They are called selectrides because there is a selective reduction and therefore they are called selectrides. So these names like superhydride, selectrides, etc. have been uh, given based on the reacting nature of such molecules. Now we look at even a more strong uh, reducing agent where even more steric hindrance has been introduced. For example, this is called as LS selectride and this is called as KS selectride. L stands for lithium and uh, S stands from the tracea mill uh, part that is triisoamyl part in which the S uh, letter has been taken up and this is how it is called as LS selectride as you can see here. So, this is KS selectride and this is LS selectride in which the uh, groups which are attached are bulkier than secondary butyl basically it is tris uh, isoamyl or triisoamyl group which is present. 
Now we take a, a case uh, something of this kind which is reported in literature in 2003. Now if we take this bicyclic molecule which is now uh, <coughs> reduced and as uh, you can see that the reduction leads to this particular hydroxy group being alpha. If uh, we see the conformation of these molecules, uh, this molecule we see that if we make it as a, as a trans uh, uh, type of molecule in which now we have a nitrogen here and a hydrogen here. Then we can put the oxygen at this stage, methyl group is alpha therefore we can put it in this way. And now if we put the carb carbonyl group which is uh, uh, here uh, and then the substituent C5H11 which is beta oriented is put it here C5H11. Now very clear that uh, this particular conformation is not a preferred conformation because the bulky C5H11 is, is uh, axial. Therefore uh, we would uh, imagine that uh, this particular uh, conformation is preferable as you can see that the C5H11 now is in equatorial orientation and the methyl here this is actual hydrogen this is methyl this is also uh, equatorial this is uh, uh, equatorial hydrogen and uh, we can remove this part here and look at the uh, methyl being equatorial. So both the groups are equatorial and now in this case what is happening is that this particular CH2 group is axial and therefore the reduction does not come uh, the, the reducing agent does not approach the carbonyl group from the lower side because lower side is basically offering a steric hindrance and therefore the reduction takes place from the top side that is the beta side and therefore the reduction leads to the uh, hydroxy group being alpha oriented and the hydrogen is coming from the beta side. This is very easily uh, seen by uh, this particular conformation and uh, so there are two reasons why this conformation is preferred. One is of course uh, you have a uh, substituent which is uh, uh, expected to be in such a way that the uh, bulky substituent prefers equatorial orientation and then between the two of them that we consider the trans as well as the cis a type of decalone type of molecules uh, we prefer the cis one. And obviously in all these cases wherever we have discussed the carbonyl group reduction with any reducing agent we have to keep in mind that the reduction takes place at uh, 107 degrees angle which is the uh, rule according to or the, the, the descriptions made according to the burgi dunitz uh, kind of uh, hypothesis or uh, the observations. So uh, in any case the reduction has occurred in a very highly dia stereo selective fashion mainly because of the very large uh, bulky groups which are present on the uh, so this LS selectride as we discussed earlier it is whenever there is a preference of L selectride versus K selectride we prefer L selectride in a similar fashion when we have LS selectride versus K S selectride people prefer LS selectride where there is a solubility problem. Now we go to another reducing agent which is sodium cyanoborohydride. Uh, not only alkyl groups which we saw in the case of uh, uh, lithium triethyl borohydride or selectride or LS selectride we saw different uh, alkyl groups which are being put in order to increase the electron releasing nature of the boro borohydrides and thus making them stronger and stronger reducing agents. But not only uh, alkyl groups that can be put as substituents but even electron drawing group such as a cyano group has been uh, introduced uh, 
uh, and attached to the boron part of the sodium borohydride which uh, is uh, easily made by reacting sodium borohydride with hydrogen cyanide and that leads to the sodium cyanoborohydride. So, what is the purpose of uh, such a reagent? That is something that we need to understand it. Sodium borohydride is uh, uh, obviously uh, the simplest reducing agent and that reacts with carbonyl compounds readily because it is ionic and in methanolic or ethanolic solutions it reacts. But we, when we put a cyano group, so cyano group is an electron withdrawing group, this particular cyano group is an electron withdrawing group and obviously it reduces the, the nucleophilic nature of the borohydride path that is now in this particular case BH3 is uh, much less than the sodium borohydride case. It is uh, obviously not easy to reduce uh, a particular carbonyl group with a compound that is having an electron withdrawing group as a nature, a cyano group as a electron withdrawing group and therefore in order to increase since we have decreased the nucleophilicity of sodium borohydride by putting cyano group. So, we need to uh, increase the electrophilicity of uh, the substrates that is the carbon group. And uh, what is interesting is that because the nucleophilicity, nucleophilic nature of the sodium borohydride has been reduced by putting a cyano group. So, the sodium cyanoborohydride now is not nucleophilic enough. So, it is found that it does not decompose in a solution even up to uh, say pH 3. That means it is stable under acidic conditions and that is the advantage. And it is also soluble in THF, methanol, water, HMPA that is hexamethyl phosphoramide. DMF that is dimethyl formamide and these they do not react with these uh, particular solvents. Now uh, just for comparison the, this is a phosphoramide and there is a this is a phosphorus triamide uh, but this is more used as a solvent and this is used as a kind of phosphine in, in comparison to triphenylphosphine or thioalkylphosphine. What do the sodium cyanoborohydride uh, allow the reactions of that is if we take a halide such as Ri or RBr or R tosylate where there is a fairly good leaving group. You have an iodide as a leaving group, bromide as a leaving group or a tosylate as a leaving group or even mesylate as a leaving group. So, we have paradolene sulfonyl or para, uh, this meth methyl, methane sulfonyl. So, sodium cyanoborohydride uh, reduces these um, molecules and the leaving groups go and then hydrogen is introduced at the R position. So, you can see here at, uh, at in HMPA at 70 degrees uh, this kind of molecule which is somewhat sensitive molecule we can reduce this particular carbon uh, bromine bond and introduce here carbon hydrogen bond. In these cases one thing which is important to remember that the uh, reducing agent sodium cyanoborohydride is stable under acidic conditions up to pH 3. So, what are the reactions that are uh, done? As I mentioned if we have decreased the reducing ability of uh, sodium borohydride by, by introducing a cyano group and thus the sodium cyanoborohydride is less nucleophilic. Therefore, we need to increase the electrophilicity of the molecules which we need to reduce. And for that purpose uh, since sodium cyanoborohydride is stable up to pH 3 to 4, we can add acid into the molecule where carbonyl group gets now protonated to form the corresponding oxonium ion. Uh, which then now is uh, fairly good electrophilic uh, in nature uh, to which sodium cyanoborohydride then reacts and then your hydrogen is transferred as a hydride 
and the corresponding alcohol is formed. So, we can also uh, do in this fashion that we put H plus and then we have sodium borodeuteride and obviously we can introduce the deuterium here and form the corresponding deuterated uh, alcohol. So, this utility of sodium cyanoborodeuteride uh, to the corresponding uh, deuterated alcohol is also utilized it. Now, in all these cases what we have seen is that we have introduced the um, acid uh, to the reaction medium in order to increase the electrophilicity of the carbonyl group. We can also uh, uh, utilize the nature of this sodium cyanoborohydride which is stable under acidic conditions in such a way that uh, for example, uh, if we take an alcohol of this kind and uh, see that uh, the alcohol which is a tertiary alcohol can easily be uh, reacted with a Lewis acid and could be, re could be ready to form a sort of carbocation uh, which is a tertiary carbocation. In this particular case it is a, just, it's a uh, uh, rigid molecule and therefore the alcohol when it coordinates with the zinc bromide uh, it releases the uh, OH part and then sodium cyanoborohydride attacks from the same side and the hydrogen is introduced where the OH group was present. Basically only because the reagent sodium cyanoborohydride is stable under acidic conditions. So, it is bas basically what we are talking is that you have a sort of carbocation that is formed. So, carbocation allows the reduction to take place. Even here in this case as we can see that uh, this uh, carbonyl group is uh, uh, reduced to the corresponding alcohol and uh, the at pH 4 the reduction allows the uh, approach of the hydrogen uh, coming from the beta side here because of the ester group which is alpha oriented. So, so you have a beta hydrogen to uh, come at the carbonyl carbon. So, uh, not only it is uh, reducing it at lower pH, but is also of course following the same principle of uh, stereoselectivity. Now, in this case in the last example here the aldehyde is also reduced again at pH 4 in a methanol as a solvent. So, when can go all the way. So, you have a possibility of uh, going via a carbocation, we have a possibility of uh, protonating the carbonyl groups and therefore, under these conditions the sodium cyanoborohydride being stable can allow the reaction to take place. Now, because uh, carbocations can be formed as you can imagine that we have uh, uh, an enamine and this enamine can be uh, reduced to the corresponding saturated molecule uh, basically because you have uh, the enamine which is uh, uh, kind of uh, nucleophilic in terms of the fact that we can move the electron density to the proton. So, if we have under acidic conditions the uh, reaction to take place in the presence of sodium cyanoborohydride, then we can expect an intermediate to form something of this sort. So, this is the intermediate that will form which then gets reduced under the conditions to basically have the reduction taking place at this center and then this such molecule is coming. So, this, this particular hydrogen is coming from the acid and this particular hydrogen is coming from the sodium cyanoborohydride and that is how we get this saturation of the double bond. In a similar fashion this is an imine uh, which is uh, very easy to understand that it gets protonated 
under the conditions to form the corresponding positive charge on this center and therefore the nucleophile sodium cyanoborohydride would attach it here uh, and then your hydrogen will come there. So this hydrogen comes from sodium cyanoborohydride and this hydrogen comes from the corresponding acid. Therefore, uh, such uh, reductions uh, are quite useful in order to uh, which cannot be uh, easily done by means of sodium borohydride uh, because such uh, uh, possibility of uh, formation of an ammonium ion or a recarbocation is not there. If we now look at the uh, uh, this aspect of it here uh, of uh, examples in which we have done the uh, uh, alkylation that is very interesting. Now I would like to discuss it in detail about it that how does this particular uh, alkylation of amines takes place. So we let me remove this uh, particular uh, part of it which we discussed just now and look at it. Um, uh, here if we take uh, this particular molecule and react with uh, formaldehyde and of course sodium cyanoborohydride and under these conditions what happens is first the formation of an something of this sort occurs after the nitrogen of the molecule methyl interacts with the formaldehyde. That means there is a condensation with the formaldehyde and an imine is formed and this ammonium ion then gets reduced at this stage here with sodium cyanoborohydride to form here NH CH3 and of course the corresponding carbonyl group is present and the corresponding ester is also present. Now here uh, there are two uh, aspects one of course we have deliberately added formaldehyde therefore the reaction occurs by condensation of amine with the formaldehyde and we form this uh, secondary amine. Now if we continue the reaction the secondary amine also will undergo condensation and form the uh, this type of uh, CH3 and here you have a double bond CH2 positive charge. So, uh, the second condensation occurs of the uh, secondary amine here and again the reduction takes place at this center with sodium cyanoborohydride here leading to the formation of dimethylamino group. So what we have done is we have introduced uh, say you have an R and then you have NH2 and we have gone stepwise. So to form RNH CH3 and then you have RN CH3 and CH3. So uh, that is because of the formaldehyde and sodium cyanoborohydride and uh, that is a very straightforward and an easy way of uh, introducing a dimethyl group on a primary amine. Uh, using the properties of uh, sodium cyanoborohydride reducing a cationic species. So, the interesting way of uh, converting uh, a carbonyl group to the uh, saturated uh, sort of uh, molecule like this hydrocarbon here. What are the ways by which uh, such a reduction can be done? That means if we have a carbonyl group of course we can carry out uh, Wolf-Kishner reduction and then we have another possibility that we protect the carbonyl group here uh, as uh, a dithioketal 
and once we have the dithiaketal, uh, the reduction can be done by Rennie nickel, the specialized special uh, nickel catalyst which on the surface of which hydrogen is adsorbed and uh, that allows the, the cleavage of this carbon sulfur bonds by the hydrogen and then you get the corresponding uh, molecule in which the oxygen is replaced by two hydrogens. Now there is another way by which we can uh, you do the same reaction by converting carbonyl group to the corresponding uh, n tosyl hydrazone that is what the reduction is that we are discussing and if we use uh, a protic source in the in the DMF and heat it we can get the same uh, reduction uh, but then it is via tosyl hydrazone. Now what is the mechanism and the acidic condition the, uh, the, the nitrogen the first nitrogen here of the tosyl hydrazone gets protonated here and we generate a ammonium ion here to which now sodium cyanoborohydride uh, donates uh, hydro hydride here with and the double bond moves with the loss of tosyl group here it goes off leading to the formation of this particular intermediate which then uh, is, uh, lo is losing a proton and goes to another uh, molecule like this which can now be uh, expected to be um, somewhat like this that we have uh, uh, loss of nitrogen in this fashion and uh, then under the protic condition the anion which is formed here is grabbed by the proton which is present here. So the blue hydrogen is coming from the sodium cyanoborohydride and once that allows the formation of this proton protic species here this uh, can rearrange by the loss of nitrogen and the proton is coming at this stage. This is how the reaction occurs. Uh, now if we uh, take a alpha beta unsaturated system uh, we have uh, uh, seen that the normal tosyl hydrazones uh, are reduced to the corresponding molecule which in which the carbonyl group has uh, now uh, through tosyl hydrazone be replaced to the corresponding two hydrogens. But if we take uh, an alpha beta unsaturated system which is from a molecule like this, if we take a molecule like this we can convert into the corresponding uh, tosyl hydrazone which then under the similar condition forms uh, the uh, corresponding uh, hydrazine type of molecule like this which then undergoes uh, rearrangement in this fashion to uh, move the double bond to this position which is this was a conjugated system and now what we have found that under these conditions it undergoes uh, deconjugation and the hydrogen is, is coming at this stage here the hydrogen is coming here. So uh, the, uh, the original uh, hydrogen had come at this stage here this should be blue in color and then we have a rearrangement that means now what we have started we started with this molecule in which we had the carbonyl group like this and eventually what we have got is this. So it is not only the reduction of the carbonyl group to the corresponding hydrogens which we have would have expected to give something like this. If it was a normal reduction then we would have expected the two hydrogens to come here. But that is not the case what we have got is, is the two hydrogens which have come are basically at uh, this uh, position here eventually. So instead of getting this molecule which we did not get it we got this molecule via the tosyl hydrazone. So this is how the 
reactions of uh, sodium cyanoborohydride take place. So uh, we will uh, stop it uh, today at this stage. Uh, we have seen uh, various aspects of uh, uh, these reducing agents uh, and now we will uh, uh, take up the other reducing agents next time. You can go through the notes of today's class and uh, get ready uh, for the next class uh, till then bye and thank you.